Today, Cooper and I have a really unique one for you. This is a Fender Custom Shop Stratocaster that's a bit of an amalgam of a lot of cool things that the Custom Shop's been doing. We're gonna walk you through each one of those, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notification, and, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store for our custom-designed merch. Also, we got Patreon. We got uh, a cool podcast that we're doing. So uh, we're a media conglomerate. We, <laughs> we're, <laughs> yes, we're we're a media conglomerate. Exactly. So make sure you check out uh, Fretboard Confessionals wherever you get podcasts. And uh, Cooper, this is a weird one you've brought me today. Yeah. Um, we're just going to talk about this co very cool guitar. It sounds amazing. But it, it's different. It's very different, which uh, just seeing the label when it came in, you know, we've talked about some custom shops recently. Chris put together a really cool list of stuff that's come in from the event last year and mm -hmm. the event this year. Seen them trickle in. And we had, you know, the Journeyman 60 Strat mm -hmm. and the American Custom Tele. We talked about it in a video linked above, um, talking about modern versus old school when it comes to the custom shop. This is kind of in this other left field thing that it, it's definitely vintage, it's old school, but like you said, it's kind of an amalgamation of the 50s. Yeah, and I, I'm sure they've done stuff like this before and maybe I'm not aware, but you said something to me as soon as I was like, wait, what's the story on this? Um, you said it was a what? It's a, it's a so journeyman? It says it's a journeyman closet classic, 1958. That's like saying, which one do you want, red or blue? Yes. Yeah. It's it's yeah. purple, dude. So um, if you have watched any of the other videos we've done, we've talked about that there's basically these different relicking tiers. Yeah. There's Time Machine, which you don't see very much anymore, but that is basically built just to the spec of a particular year um, with no aging. Yeah. It's like it, you know, Marty McFly went back in time, got it, brought it back, and then sold it at a guitar show for lots of money. Um, that would be Biff, actually. He would have done that one. Biff, dude. yeah. Anyway, so that's what the Time Machine is. The Closet Classic is similar. Um, there's some aging. It's basically a guitar that wasn't played much, put away, uh, put in the closet, and you know has yellowing and patina, but not wear from playing. The Journeyman has wear from playing. Like a well-cared-for guitar from a musician that really loves and takes care of their stuff, but is just going to pick up stuff on the journey, so to speak. Yeah. And then you have your Relic, and you have your Heavy Relic, which speaks for itself. But this being kind of a... A blend yeah. is different. And I think when you get a custom shop and it's not one that you spec'd out, that's where the booklet comes in handy because I opened this up and I want to see the specs, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. By the way, we've said this before, if you ever see like on the used market, you're at a guitar show or something and they have a custom shop uh, fender, if it doesn't have this, um, it should have this. It so, should have this. Just saying. Which is cool because right off the bat you got your COA signed by Ron Thorne. If you're a big Fender fan, you know the name, but it's just cool. You know, we do all these Fender classes and stuff. There's so much about the custom shop and Ron Thorne, you know, being kind of the mastermind yeah. and the director of the custom shop Ron's and all that. Good guy. Um, but then you also get your full on spec sheet, which came with this guitar and a very cool tweed case that's lined with some crushed red velvet cake. Um, and so we got the limited 58 strat, and it says JRNCC, Journeyman. Closet Classic, aged Sherwood green metallic, which is just a cool color that we don't see often. Yeah, it's a very cool, like, pewter style color. Yeah, and it's also... With, with a knocked down finish. It's a... The Sherwood is available not, you know, with this level of relicking, but you can get a mod shop in Sherwood. I think it's a really cool color, so check it out. But it says 58 Strat, and then right under it it says base model 56 Strat. What's going on here? Okay. <laughs> so we got a 56 style body, mm -hmm. um, a 56, yeah, 54 style soft V neck. It's not soft, nor is it a V. It threw kind of both of us. Now, yeah. I've been looking at it, and there's there's the start of a V right here, yeah. and then it really wears down. Yeah. Um, but the finish is worn down, and it's interesting. It's a really, we both talked about, this is a really comfortable neck. Super Whatever comfortable neck, calling and it. it's triple A grade flame maple. Yeah. Um, roasted flame maple, which 
I, I don't know if they had a ton of roasted flame maple uh, AAA grade in, back in 54. No, they didn't have any. <laughs> um, so that's very cool. And then it says the neck like 58 Strat Closet Classic Relic. So what I think we're assuming here is you got your Journeyman Relic on mm -hmm. the body. You got a Closet Classic Relic on the neck. But you also got a lot of wear up there. So mm -hmm. it's like the front of the neck. Yeah, relict and the back is closet classic. Well, the back has some just wear to it. So, um, you know, you've got the finish. It's super smooth right through here where you would typically play, uh, which incidentally is how my my strat is satin finished on the yeah. back. But this area is like shining up because yeah. that's where you play. It's the, it's the best feeling. In the yeah. World. And so that's what's happened with this nitro. You know, it would be worn down and that's what they've done. Um, and then someone was playing a lot of cowboy chords in the first position, and so that's where the fret's worn through. Which is a shame because as a lead guitar, um, it's one of the best sounding strats I've played from the custom shop for sure. And I think it has to do with the pickups. Now, like mm -hmm. Chris, I peruse the custom shop site all the time, and you start recognizing these terms, and like, man, I would love to play some with those. Right. I have no idea what... I had no idea what Tomatillo or Poblano pickups were supposed to sound like. Love that that was the name. Um, but this has the Tomatillo pickups. Spicy. So uh, neck in the middle, Tomatillo's bridge, Poblano. So it's it's a spicy guitar. Do a little dance and you have salsa. Yeah. And uh, the pickups sound really, really good. Yeah. And I like, like a lot of the 50s stuff, a lot of the custom shop pickups in general, they cut through in a way that I don't think, like say you get an American Pro 2 Strat, your V-Mod pickups, they're, they sound incredible, very rounded, but when you're sort of in the rhythm section, mm -hmm. they're, they can get muddy. I'm not saying that they're muddy pickups, they're clear and they're beautiful, but they definitely have all that kind of girth and it's for rhythm. Even in the neck position, like it, it could cut through and be the lead guitar. You What's know? interesting about the way that these do that is, you know, you can. There's different ways you can cut through in the mix, right? You mm -hmm. can just boost certain frequencies and get kind of too direct with it. Mm -hmm. It gets shrill because yeah. the leading edge of that note is really harsh. On these, they cut through, and yet the leading edge of that note is still softened in such a way that it's really nice. Yeah. No, it know. sounds great. Um, so. I really like this guitar, and it's, first of all, obviously, you know, you'll see in the pictures and stuff, but the checking on that finish is one yeah. of the coolest checking, I mean, really cool. I really like checking with this type of finish, Yeah. where there's a bit of a, a metallic aspect to it, because it just, I don't know, it works really well to have that, the light refraction highlights of this kind of spiderweb checking that's going on. Single ply pit guard, which is cool. I like single plies. Um, that's always nice, typical hardware, which is not your patina hardware. Yeah. It looks like new hardware. That's part of the closet classic thing, I guess. And then, of course, your you know heel plate, limited edition, custom shop. And it's just a fantastic strat. I want to hear it, and then I have a question for you on the philosophy of the custom shop. All right. Well, let's take a listen. <laughs>
Switch places. I get the book now. He gets the book. I get to hold the guitar. Um, so it smells like pleather. I love a good pleather, dude. Um, playing it through the Hot Rod Deluxe, clean tones because something about '50s Strat and the clean kind of sound. I, you know, you think Buddy Holly for me. Just really nice, clean stuff. It feels great. And then on the Blues Junior, because we've been using it because we still are waiting on tubes from Slovenia. Um, <laughs> So you can drive a Blues Junior a little bit. It's not like the overdrive channel of the Hot Rod Deluxe, mm -hmm. but we've talked about it before. Turn that master down, turn the channel volume up, and throw the fat switch on. Right. Really nice kind of good tube breakup sound. You had to give a little overdrive on this. Now, my question for Chris is, is the custom shop for guitar players to spec out their dream guitar, or is it for talented builders to put together something that I don't think many people would spec out like this. Yes. So it is for both. Um, it's a good question, though, because here's what I'll tell you. The, the builders in there, um, and a lot of people at Fender, are Fender guitar nerds. Yeah. You know, just like we are. Uh, but more so than me, us and many others, they know the history. Yeah. Um, and they have access to some of these you know, int instruments that many of us don't get to play. So um, there's two ways of looking at that. You can come in and you can say, here's what I want. I know what I want. But there's great advice in going, these guys really know a lot more than, than yeah. you do, than I do. Um, and they've experimented with a lot of things and have found what works And uh, if you're going for a particular thing. And I think it's, it's telling that there have been very famous musicians that have gone through the custom shop and have relied on the custom shop builders, yeah. you know, in building their instrument um, because of that knowledge and that experience that they have. So something like this, it reminds me of something that uh, artists used to do back in the day, where their guitars, famous guitars, would be this amalgam of yeah. this body's a '56, this neck's a '57. You know, this yeah. pick pickup is from a '61, this is from a '57, and this is from a '60. You know, that kind of thing 
went on because particularly in the early days of Fender, there was, I mean, they were constantly evolving models. It really, we've talked about that a little bit before, but it really wasn't like today Yeah. where you have this, here are the specifications and that's what the specifications will be for the next five years or so. Yeah. You know, this was, this was frontier life of designing the first electric guitars and experimenting along the way and changing things, sometimes mid-year. Yeah. Um, and so you'll get vintage guitars that um, are both 58s and will be wildly different yeah. from one another. The different wood. One of the things I love is that Eric Johnson Strat that he loves turns out to have sassafras wood, the yeah. Virginia Strat. Yeah. It's like, well, that wasn't spec, you yeah. know, but they built a guitar with sassafras wood. And so the custom shop guys know these stories. They have access to these instruments. And when they're building something like this, they get to go, what would be really cool? Yeah. Let's put something together. And what I like about this versus, say, building your own, is they will come up with something that somebody probably would never have going down checking boxes on a spec sheet put yeah. together. Yeah. Um, and the world's a better place for it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I think about how many people are able to put their hands on a 56, 54, 58 Strat and then know, okay, I want this part from the 54, I want this part from the 56. And for me, it says on, you know, on the label on the box, it says 58 Strat. So immediately you think, okay, all of this is to spec 58 and not until kind of diving in right. would you learn. And then I always say, you know, I like a thick neck on a Stratocaster, a Tele, whatever. Um, but I could never know enough to say I want the 54 soft V. Right. But now, knowing it, now I'm going to say, well, I really like that 54 soft V, you know? And this is the difference between hands-on and experience versus reading specs. Yeah. A lot of people would go, I don't like a V-neck. Yeah. You know, I remember the first time, I, I was very opinionated about the thickness of necks, and the first time we got a 52 Tellian, and it had that U-shaped neck, and I I was like, oh, that's going to be terrible. And then I put it in my hands and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. And, and it helped me gravitate to, you know, different shaped necks than I'd previously experienced. The other great thing about this is I would argue that a guitar like this is better than just a 58 clone For or sure. a 56 clone. Yeah. To your point, how many roasted AAA maple necks were they doing in 58? None. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. It yeah. looks awesome. It feels awesome. Um, you can talk about the fact that roasting wood or doing any kind of torrefaction is going to make it more stable and lighter and more resonant. Um, but even if it's just on looks alone, you know, you're, you've got that without doing a tint or something and it looks phenomenal. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a better guitar. Okay. Here's my hot take. I think mo for the most part, going to get killed. The guitars that the Fender Custom Shop makes based upon vintage models are arguably better than most of the vintage models that are available on the market. That's my hot take. That is a hot take. Well, for one, some of those guitars are just bad guitars. Yeah. Okay? There was a lot of inconsistency, and there were really amazing guitars, and there were some bad guitars. Two, a lot of them aren't original. Um... And Joe Bonamassa had this take once about like taking guitar apart and putting it back together how many times just to make sure it is all original. Like, that's not great. Leave the guitar alone. Stop taking the neck off. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like we've got manufacturing processes down. We've got the hindsight and experience of, you know, decades yeah. um, behind these, these builders, you know, their knowledge and their experience. Um, and what they can put together, pulling from history, arguably makes a better guitar than what we have from history. So, and it's cheaper. It's it an expensive cheap. guitar, yeah. but it's a lot cheaper than someone's beat up 196. Like, we've been to guitar shows. You find some 69 post CVS beat up guitar that was put through a fire or drug around, and it's got mi mix match parts, and people want 10 grand for it. That's, this well, is a better guitar. For Yeah, a concrete example. Recently, a fella came into the store with a 58 Strat. Beautiful guitar. It had some chunks out of it, but it was awesome to see. He didn't let me touch it. Totally fine. Just seeing it was very cool. And then it, he was very proud of the price that he got it for. And it was a five-digit number. 
that didn't start with one or two, you know? But I think if you're a collector, it's one thing. Yeah. I think if you're a player, it's another. Um, you know, one of the things that people don't often talk about in regards to vintage instruments is the degradation of the electronics. Uh, I've pulled out, I've pulled pick guards off of vintage guitars and because they weren't functioning and wiring has rusted. Yeah, because there's was rats in, in there. <laughs> no, just in the human environment. Yeah, I did. I did find a vintage. Uh, it was a vintage Gibson that was termite eaten once. That was interesting. Uh, it was it was lighter. It's chamber, um, dude. That's <laughs> it was chambered. It's weight relief. Um, yeah, but so you know, it's not to take anything from the 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 vintage collector market, but as musicians who play guitar, um, I it, personally I just I think there's there's an aura to it that's like oh wow. Is that really you know a 59 Les Paul or a 58 Strat? Um, but consistently, I find these custom shop creations, and I and the manufacturers would probably love me saying this are usually so much better than a lot of the vintage stuff I play. Yeah, it's a brand new guitar. Yeah, but it's and it's made to be played. Bobbins haven't or the wiring around the bobbin hasn't rusted or anything. Yeah, it's great. I I did think that it was worth it to show this one, and we're probably going to have to do. A bunch more kind of one-off custom shop stuff. As they trickle in because yeah. we're going to see a lot of cool stuff. And I've looked at the list, and they're all really unique. And that's really why. I, cool. That's why I selected them. We get this opportunity yeah. to go through, and I was like, "These are cool." Yeah. You know, let's let's get these. Yeah, and so we talked about we had those custom tellies. Those were NOS. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a brand new guitar made to be brand new guitar, and they were super cool. And then comparing it to say the '52 telly or something, they're such different instruments, but they're all great, and I know some of the stuff that's coming through. Very excited for it, so we're gonna have to find new ways to talk about custom shop, and it's gonna be fun. But this one is on the site right now because we mm. do have it, and it's we just got here. AlamoMusic.com. It's Come a brand on. brand new old guitar. Brand new so. old, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> take advantage now. I got another hot take for you on vintage instruments. Just just to just you to make them. sure that people hate my guts when we're done with it. What you got? Physics don't change. The physics on a bench and the custom shop now are the same as they were in Fullerton back in the 50s. And, you know, one could argue, oh, well, the wood's older, but not necessarily. Yeah. Um, and so, hey, all I'm saying is if they could build a good guitar back then, they could build a good guitar right now. And if you stop romanticizing it, you, you could get a better deal on a better instrument. So, yep. That's good for me. And vintage prices go, psh, no, no one listens to me. It doesn't matter. It's whatever, but yeah. <laughs> so if they want information, they go where? Which you gotta go to almomusic.com and keep updating, keep refreshing the page because we got stuff coming in. It's slated to be here, you know, slowly through the next few months. This one's on there right now. A couple other strats and I think a telly. They're going, but hopefully as they go, we'll get new stuff in. It's gonna be great. There you go. Um, and remember, at the end of the day, best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing, new or old, whether it's something that you just bought or can finance your child's college education. Play the sucker. That's what makes the difference. That's what we're all about. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and keep coming back for more. Anything else? No, that's good. Bye.